Breaking news. Self-referendum. As Simon Ekwa fingers marginalization on the development in security, poverty in Southeast as the justification for freedom fighting. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wonderful people, lots of freedom all over the world. Wherever you're joining us from today, you're highly welcome to this wonderful YouTube platform that gives you quality news and information on every activities happening in this territory. Please subscribe to this channel if you've not yet subscribed and make sure you turn on your notification because we will notify you whenever we drop our spanking news. Now, straight up to the issue on ground and straight up to the matter we'll carry on for you. The Prime Minister Simon Eba has actually cited out them. Um, you know the reason why he is fighting for freedom and the only thing that can stop his freedom fighting without wasting much of your time make will hit you the news in details the news the prime minister of the biafra republic government in elzai simon ekpa has cited marginalization on the development insecurity attack against christians and poverty in the southeast and south south region as justification for the vote for self-referendum simon ekba disclosed this in a statement via his um, official s formerly known as um, twitter handle on tuesday he claimed that over 50 million beer friends have voted for beer friends self-referendum through e-voting and physical voting and the truth of the matter is it's not about claiming over 50 beer friends have truly voted we continue with the news. He stressed that the numbers of Bia France who have voted for self-referendum in the last eight months surpassed the number of voters in the 2023 general Nigerian and presidential election, which stood at them um, 25,286,616. Let it be on record. The sample of the Bia France self-referendum physical voting card has recorded over 50 million votes, double the general election's results. 50 million votes officially recorded and registered in the 40 United States of Biafra. We are making it happen. Tell your children this is how we did it. Let the historians go to work, he said. He said that the e-voting for self-referendum commenced in February 2024 ahead of his December 2nd Biafran Liberation Declaration. Now, um, there is always a reason why people, you know, decide to fight for freedom. There is a reason why a particular set of people will say, this is not what we want anymore. We are tired of this country. You know, we are tired of how we are treated. And there might be so many reasons. But you see, one particular reason must not be overlooked. And that is the issue of marginalization. And you will agree with me that when it comes to the issue of marginalization, the evils have had it them enough. It's like a normal thing. Nobody is even seeing it. The way the Igbos are marginalized. So the big question is, when will these actually stop? When will these marginalization actually stop? It will not stop. And that is why people have come out, you know, to exercise their rights as citizens. That we are tired of um, this contraption called Nigeria who want to leave and that is the most important thing so you must understand that there is a reason why you know Bia France decided to vote for Biafra and this thing didn't start today it's been here all these years but the only difference is that you know Simon Epa took it to another level to a critical level at that, to a level of 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 um of, of um, finishing, a level where we can actually come out and say, oh, there is hope in this thing. That is the level he took it to. 
And people have actually reacted to these by coming out to exercise them, their franchise. See, I've posted the videos over and over, you know, just for evidence on my channel where, you know, Bia France in numbers come out to vote. I purposely posted those videos so that it will be a reminder that truly these things actually happened. It was, it was not just a mere talk. It was not just propaganda. It was not just, um, you know, to just um, pile up number. It actually happened. In fact, I want you, you know, to listen to this particular broadcast in line with this um, discussion. And do not forget, as you're doing that, please make sure you share this video to as many groups and platforms as possible. Trying to find out what's going on inside the house. Some are watching, thinking if we're going to fail or if we're serious. Let me tell you, this journey that we have embarked on, we are not going back. We are not. And if you are a Biafran, you don't ask yourself questions. I don't know what to tell you. You need to locate one of the closest hospital. Visit a psychiatrist so they can evaluate you to know if you are okay. So they can know, check you out if you are sick, mentally, physically, spiritually we are not talking about the kind of spirituality that Abu Kobi and others will tell you about what going on with you we are talking about the spirituality of seeing the physical what plays in your eye what you see in daily basis what you encounter we are talking about when you wake up in the morning, you look at your surrounding, everywhere don't look tied up, you don't add up. Everywhere is thick, you don't have sewer system, you don't have water that run inside your house. The environment is so polluted, no good health care. Why will you even have a good health care? Why you don't have functioning hospitals? Why inside the hospitals that actually function that are not up to the standard? Mosquitoes live inside the hospital. Inside the hospital, you actually will get sick inside. That's how terrible that country is. If you don't ask yourself a question, is this how God created us to live? Is this how Chukoki Kabiyama want Biafrans to live? Is it Biafrans' destiny? For those of you that live in diaspora, you have seen a civilized world where everything runs smoothly. And you stop there for years, for generations. You forgot about where you come from. You are mentally sick. And don't you condemn who? Uzodima, or Uzodima, whatever the governor name that killed his own people. Why I said you should not, you condemn yourself first because you are worse than him. When you blame someone, still point the same finger to yourself and ask yourself a question. Are you doing the same thing whoever you are blaming, complaining about? Are you doing the same thing they're doing? If you are doing the same thing, 
Both of you are still the, uh, the same bears that flies together. Both of you are still the same thing. I grew up from Briafa land. Seeing my country, my fellow Biafran citizens struggling, struggling, fighting hard. They have to leave their territory, their domain. So a known territory just to be able to do what? Make a living. Just to be able to survive. Do you ask yourself a question, those that live in diaspora? When you acquire your visa, which state from the Biafran territory did you get the visa from? Which of the embassy or liaison office from the Biafran territory? Because the zoo country did not allow you to have one. You don't have one. Then you ask yourself, when you flew out of that country, from which of the airport, which of the airport that you flew from? No, from Biafra land. Because that's exactly what the wicked empire of the British and its allies, they want to subdue you, humiliate you, do everything that they can. So you won't be relevant. Suppress you. Make sure that you will not rise. Make sure that they will be able to make you dry. Take all your resources. For those that still believe in one Nigeria, let me ask you a question. Just the concluded Olympic, we have what we call country. And countries, how many gold, silver, bronze did the so called Nigeria? One. All of you idiotic, stupid people that believe in a fair country, how proud are you to say you are in Nigeria? Why you see countries that won to two medal of over 100? That is what you call a country. That is what you call a country. But let me tell you, Biafras, when Biafra come, we will compete. Yes. We will come home with gold, silver, bronze, name it. Because anywhere we go, we are champions. Any country we find ourselves, we make it happen. Wherever we are, we excel. The sky is our limit. If you're a Biafra worship me today, you don't feel the pain to know that you refuse to rescue your nation. Shame unto you. Woe unto you. Couple of days ago, sometime last weekend, I comforted some group of Biafans in a restaurant here in the United States of America. I was so angry, bitterly upset. I actually laid a course on some of them. I let them know. This pain that they are putting us through. 
if they don't come and be part of what we are doing, to make sure this journey will go smooth and easy for all of us. The land of Biafra will reject them. And no seed they will sow when Biafra comes that they will reap. Because it's so heartbreaking that some Biafras decide not to be part of what we are doing. And in the country where they reside, they believe they have arrived where they have good neighborhood where they live. If they encounter anything that comes on their harm's way, they will call the police. They will die 911. In less than a minute, the rescue team will be there. They realize, they believe they have arrived in a country where they reside since the life there is much more easier than where they came from. Here in the United States of America, this country has fought over 108 war. All this war they are fighting, why? It's war for freedom. That's what put them in the map of being the world leader. They fight for their survival. They make sure that the terrorists don't bring the war, the fight, to their own home soil. Rather, they wage the war upon them before the war gets to them. Be our friends. Freedom is not given. Freedom is taken. Freedom is good. Nothing wrong with that. And for us to be able to achieve our freedom, what do we need to do? If we want Biafra land to compete and to be better than Dubai, America, and the rest of the world, what do we need to do? First of all, we need to first get our freedom. We need to rescue ourselves from the bondage that we are. Now, dear friends, we all know we are no longer agitated. Rather, we are liberated. Just like what happened in all around the globe. You see people fighting. Fighting for what? Some are fighting to liberate themselves from the terrorists around them or from the terrorists that want to subdue them and run, take over their land. We, the Africans, we have went through war with the Nigerian government before, or Nigeria as a, a contraption or a company of the British Empire. Where the British Empire waged the war and uh, they make sure they have blockage every way that food will come into Biafra, which results millions of Biafrans, my fellow Biafrans, women, children, our uncles, brothers, nephews that died through salvation. If that don't make you feel bad or hurt you, tell me, who are you? Are you truly a Biafran? Or you are one of those full learning that are born into Biafra land 
to destabilize us, to make sure that they take the line of the Biafrans from them. There's what we call when you hear the cry of a brother, don't run away. What you do, you stand tall, shoulder to shoulder with brother and make sure they are all rescued. If you are truly a Biafran, this call for freedom is for you. And make sure you be part to make a history to liberate your people, to make a history to make sure that generation will talk about you. The zoo government, they think we are joking. They kidnap our leader, Mazin Namdekano, thinking it's over. News flash is not over yet. We will fight, fight, fight until we make sure that we defeat our enemy. Because freedom is worth fighting for. And this journey that we have embarked on, we are not going back. We will do everything, whatever it takes, for us to get our freedom. The good news is that we all the leaders that we have had have fought from the time of our leader, Mazi Odume Ujuku, and his vice, Mazi Philip Efion, they fought very hard for their people, for the love they have for their friends. Because they foresee this day that if they don't fight for their friends to make sure that we have a country, we have a nation, they see what will happen. And they make sure that they set the example, they set the page, for us to emulate and step up. Our leader, Mazin Namdikan, another visionary. In the so-called contraption today, even the so-called men of God will believe, I believe they all will testify that they have not seen any man like our leader, Mazi Nabikan. Everything he has said about the zoo come to pass. When he said they are coming, they are coming. Some of the idiots that claim to be Ohanese, I don't know who they are leading, not me, I believe not you. And the governors that are sold out, they were like, how is it going to be possible? Even the Southwest and the South South, some are asking questions. What is this man called Mazin Namdikan talking about? But now they confess in a daily basis because he is a prophet who foresaw what will happen. And uh, our Prime Minister, Mazi Simon Eba, the man with vision, the game changer, who know how to get his people freedom, the mathematics Nigeria can never solve, is our Prime Minister, Mazi Simon Eba. He beat Nigeria hands down. They tried to figure out how is he doing this? That is the mathematics that they cannot solve. 
because his destiny to carry his people through the finish line. And if you are not seeing it, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how blind you are. I don't know who will open your eye so you can see that we are in the path to our freedom. That comes to the reason why we are here today. The lobbyist team that are part of the sponsorship to sponsor our lobbyists supposed to be here with me today, but because of the short notice. So sometime next week, they're going to be joining us so that they can talk to their friends as well to encourage their friends to join this sponsorship of the lobbyists. As we know, we can see that our lobbyists are doing a, a great job. And for Biafrans, if you have not been supporting what we are doing, I don't know what to tell you. But all I will tell you is that you will regret your action. It's not a cause. It's a prophecy. You will regret. What those saboteurs and those that are not supporting are putting us through, I don't think God will hear your prayer when you, when you will pray for forgiveness. We will pay you back with revenge, with how angry we are that Biafras have been killed over five million. If you don't feel bad about the condition of Biafras, about what their friends are going through, about the suffering of our people, if that don't hurt you, if that don't make you have a rethink, we'll deal with you. It's a promise. Because our heart is broken. We deserve better as human beings. We deserve better we deserve to have a better country. We deserve to live like humans because we are part of God's creation. What we are doing is the right thing. We are fighting a just cause. If you don't like the fight we are fighting, go and drink acid, jump inside lagoon, jump inside the ocean, go kill yourself. We are not hiding mouth. We as a people deserve freedom. We never invaded anyone. We never take what don't belong to us. We are just asking for our existence, our freedom. And as for you as a dear friend that decide to sabotage what we are doing, to stop us from the back, to drag us backward, time is coming. Mother of fact, disappear from Biafra. Leave us alone. We have a program that is going on, the IOU program. A lot of Biafrans, they have been donating for a while and are contributing from their heart. Thank you all for all you're doing. And special thanks to our Liberation Army that are in the bushes, that are in Biafra land, protecting our vulnerable women and children from the hand of our enemy. Thank you all for the sacrifice. For those of you that left your home for years, left your entire family, sleeping in where you don't supposed to, just to make sure your people are safe, Thank you. We appreciate you. We appreciate all you are doing. And we appreciate that you all are loyal to one and only the prime minister that we have. 
because he is the chief of army staff we have. We appreciate your loyalty. As our leader, we all have the due respect to respect his authority and work with him so he can take us to the finish line because he is a man who, who know the map the road map to get to where we are going that's why we are so loyal to him if you don't like the loyalty that we are pledged to him you go to hell that's what it is that's what it is we don't have two captains two commanders we only have one leader Mazinam Dikano and our prime minister we don't have no second in command no 10 in command or no 100 in command we only have one chain of command our prime minister will give directives and order so the rest of you with your order go to hell we don't want to sink where we have people drinking who we pilot us we are loyal to him thank you our prime minister every dear friend that have participated so far on the iou program thank to all of you who don't work out. thank you thank you i spoke with one of our young sister today that uh, want to participate in the iou my heart is warmly gladdened seeing our young ones stepping up some of our young ones that are actually struggling at the place of work not like not that they have it all but they want to be part of what we are doing because they love freedom i wish i can mention the names of those that have participated it gives joy that the Biafra is alive. It gives joy that what we are doing, Biafras are killing. And for those of you that receive, re refuse to join what we are doing, I get money. Time is coming. The IOU, the media team, they do the replay today. Which I believe a lot of us here watch the repeat program that was uh, aired today. Why the IOU is so important? Our leader, Mazin Namdikan, once said that we are friends to love buying and selling whatever they will profit from. Some are doing it so that they will profit from it. Kudos to you. We appreciate your sacrifice. We appreciate what you are doing. And if you are doing it to help, thank you. We appreciate you as well. And if you have not been part of this program, kindly be part of it. Please, be our friends. It's time that we all come together, unite and make sure that we fund our movement we form the liberation army because with money with finance everything will go as smooth everything will be easier the journey of a thousand miles will turn to a journey of five miles the journey of 100 miles, we can cut the journey short to two miles. So why not you support? I have a question, just like uh, former President Trump asked uh, the black community during his campaign before his first presidency in 2016, he asked the black community, what do you have to lose if you vote for him? He's saying if they vote for him, they have nothing to lose. Because he will do everything, everything with his power to make sure that the black community 
benefit from his administration. Dear friends, I'm throwing a challenge asking you, what will you lose if you financially support the freedom of your people, of your country, of your generation, of yourself? You have everything to gain. You tell me what is holding you back. Talk to me, dear friend. What is holding you back? If you have what it, is, what it takes to support what we are doing today, and you know we are genuinely fighting this cause, and you refuse to support, shame to you. You are evil. And your evil will cash up on you. Because a lot of you there want us to fail. And we will disappoint you. You will be disappointed. And for all of you that know how to sing praises on how what we are doing, we are doing the right thing, we are in the right channel. God has brought our PM, Mercy Simon Edward, to lead us. God is behind what we are doing. And you refuse to financially support. If you have the money to support and you refuse to do that, shame unto you and your generation. The land of Biafra will reject you forever. We are not looking back when we ask the land of Biafra to deal with you because you disown the land of Biafra. If you believe in Biafra and you believe in the land of Biafra and you believe that Biafra is a territory designed, ordained by Chukukika Biafra, our God, and you refuse to defend our land, Chineke, war work before the devil will visit you because that's who you are you are evil you are devil you don't deserve to live those that deserve to live are those that believe that their fellow human being will live if you don't believe that biafrans have the right to live in Biafra land, that Biafra have the right to exist, that Biafra have the right to live in God-given land, you as a person, you don't deserve to live. Then if you decide to live, get out from Biafra land, relocate, go to that land, that place that you believe is where you're from. If you're from the north, move to the north. If you're from the Oduduwa Republic, move, leave Biafra alone. We Biafrans have to fight for our land. We don't have nowhere else to go. When somebody push you, push you to the wall, where do you run to? Nowhere else. You are done. But before they push us to that wall, we will make sure we defend ourselves. We will make sure we do everything that we can. And if you are not one of those that are doing your best, please, we beg you, do your best. Because Biafra land is what fighting for. You are not just fighting for yourself. You are fighting for your generation, your unborn children, your entire lineage. That's what you are fighting for. And for those of you that believe you have something in common with the Israelites. Proclaim it and act upon it. 
Look at the history of the Israelites. Whenever they face challenges, they fight back. For example, of what is going on now, you can see them fighting back. They are fighting the terrorists on their right, on their left. They are fighting Hamas, Hezbollah, Houthis, the Iranian, all the Iranian process. They never fold their hand. Praying, doing fasting and prayer. Believing that their fasting and prayer is what will save them. They equip themselves with logistics. They equip themselves with guns. What they can deceive, the, what they can defeat the enemy with. And if you're one of those in Biafra land that believe in just fasting and prayer from morning to night, God don't work that way. We have to defend our land. You can still do that fasting and prayer, but we need money to be able to get what we need to win this fight. Every dear friend, this is a call for all of us to financially support our freedom. At the end of all the big grammar, English program, everything we do, it boils to money. 